Thank you, Bruce. And now, um, you know, we've, uh, we've obviously been working with Intel uh, these last several months, evaluating what we were going to do leading up to this decision. And um, we found, see, we've kind of gotten deeper uh, in discussions with them than ever before. And we found something pretty amazing, which is they're kind of like us. They're passionate about their products. They're an engineering-driven culture that is passionate about their products. And uh, we didn't always view them that way. But that's what we found. And our engineers have gotten along famously with their engineers. And we've had extremely productive working relationship uh, as we've come to learn about uh, their roadmaps, what we could do with their technology. It's been, uh, it's been great. And it's my pleasure to introduce Paul Adelini, the president and the CEO of Intel. I invited him here because I wanted you to hear directly from him uh, what he thinks about all this. Well, I suspect there's a whole bunch of you that never thought you'd see that uh, logo on this stage. Uh, I was one of them for a while, I'm not anymore, obviously. We are uh, so excited at Intel to, be a, to be, have given the opportunity to work with Apple to bring you some really great products. I, I thought I would try to explain how we got here today, and I would do it in the context of telling you a story. And the story is really about Apple and Intel, and I call it a Silicon Valley story. And it goes back a ways. In fact, it goes back almost four decades. Intel was founded in 1968 by Gordon Moore and Bob Noyce. Bob was the co-inventor of the integrated circuit. We started out building memories. First product was an SRAM. We invented the DRAM. And a few years later, we invented the world's first microprocessor, the 4004. And we were in Mountain View. Well, sort of uh, eight years later, five miles away in Cupertino, Apple was founded. And you can see the picture of Steve and Waz there. Uh, you can also see on the right-hand side a picture of Steve <laughs> and Bob Noyce on the right-hand side having dinner. Uh, I asked Steve last night as an aside, was that the last time you wore a tie? And he said, no, it's the last time I wore a mustache, though. <laughs> What you may not know is that our connection between Intel and Apple started around the same time. Bob and Andy Grove, actually, were early investors in Apple, Apple Computer. And in fact, Ann Bowers was Bob Noyce's wife, and she was Apple's first VP of HR. So there were some early signs of genetic connection. It didn't quite work out the way we had hoped. And in fact, Apple started in 1976 with a chip from MOS technology. Well, our microprocessor business in the PCs came quite after that. In 1981, IBM chose the 8088 to go in their first PC. And things went along for quite some time. And as Steve has pointed out, in 1993, two events happened. Well, Apple switched from the 68K to the PowerPC and Intel launched the Pentium processor and started ramping it in earnest. And for the next couple of years, competition really heated up quite a bit. It got pretty intense. It got so intense that in 1996, Apple... <laughs> they they set fire to our bunny person. And I know some of you may not be as old as this commercial, but I thought I'd let it run for you anyway, in case you haven't seen it. Apple Computer would like to apologize for toasting the Pentium 2 processor in public. But the fact remains. The chip inside every new Power Macintosh G3 is up to twice as fast. <laughs> now, 
Now, now, you know, we didn't have a grudge about that. <laughs> we just thought it was a not so subtle message that they thought our Apple thought our processors were too hot and they wanted us to run a lot cooler. <laughs> well, by the time we got to 2005, in fact, the processors are running a lot cooler, and we are so happy that the world's most innovative computer company and the world's most innovative chip company have finally teamed up. This I thought I would give you my perspective on the partnership. I think that this brings together the skills and the opportunities and the engineering excellence of two great companies. And they combine our strengths and they play on our respective strengths. Apple has a legendary capability in hardware and software engineering and design and an innovation. You all know.